To empower others to break patterns, flip perspectives, so that together we have clarity, direction, and success way beyond what we ever previously thought possible. Here's your host, Frankie Lee. Yes, 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 we are back today, and I am absolutely buzzed about this podcast. This podcast is gonna be is gonna go down as one of my most legendary podcasts. I've just got a feeling about it. Today, we are lucky enough to have in the studio Mr. Ty Lucas himself. Now, let me give you a bit of a background before before we go into it. Ty is a former professional bodybuilder who's, who's won on stage many times, competed in the Arnold's at top level in Melbourne, I, I think. Um, and he moved... He's he's got a massive story, and, and we're going to tell some of that today, but he his whole story and how his life's changed, it's gone from bodybuilding to naturopathy, um, surf coaching and everything else it's just a really truly epic story my intro is doing it no justice but welcome to the show mr ty lucas thank you very much frankie Look how at- how was that how was that oh, that was a bit I, i'm a bit disappointed in 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 in, in that intro because i think i've properly downplayed it <laughs> well I'll, I'll correct you a little bit there yeah, 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 yeah. um so not a professional bodybuilder but i was quite up there as an amateur bodybuilder yeah, um, yeah. around the Australian circuit. And um, I won the world qualifier, which was going to get me over to Spain to compete. But that's when I transitioned out because I knew it wasn't for me. Yeah. And, and thanks, thanks for the correction. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm back at school already. I've already been corrected. But, um, mate, before we, go into, before we go into the journey, obviously, um, how did you even go to getting into bodybuilding like because obviously it wasn't it's not something that everyone just goes okay yeah i'm just going to go and start bodybuilding like you have to there's got to be a bit of a lead into that give give us a bit of a background into how that all started 100 percent. so um earlier on 18 years old that's when i first started doing my fifo work that's where i originally started working pretty much um, always been a competitive sp- person growing up, football, golf, surfing, anything. I could do any team sport, you name it. I would go full out and love the competitive side of it. So four and one roster, FIFO work. Yeah, yeah. Can't really compete in anything doing that, right? Yeah, yeah, Except yeah. Except for maybe drinking beers on your week off. Um, yeah, so, that's, so for people at home that don't know what that is, that's fly-in, fly-out work. So in Australia, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of mines out there that have fly-in, fly-out workers, and it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a regular thing in Australia for, for this kind of work to happen. Yeah, so pr- pretty much I had, I had two options in the FIFO industry. It's either go to the pub with the boys after work or the wet mess, they called it there, Yeah, because uh, we had these big mining camps that we were living in while we're out at work, or go to the gym after work, so... I naturally chose the gym because I know it's fitness related at the time and loved my sports. So I was like, all right, I'll get good at this. Started training a bit, put on a bit of muscle and whatnot. Um, And then I met another guy in there and he was shredded, tanned, shredded, like had tattoos, (laughs) like look good, you know? And it's one of those guys that you see a lot of them around the Gold Coast now. There's a lot of jacked and shredded boys, but out in the FIFO field and being a young buck myself there, it was pretty rare, so I was like, I want, I want to look like that. So I ended up talking to him because most people that work in most, well, most people that work in a trade, as I, as because I used to work in a trade. Obviously, that's 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 where we first resonate from. But like most people that work in a trade, I find are, are are thoroughly depressed and hate their life and and go and get overweight and on the beers. Like in that I've found in Australia. I mean, I don't know if you've kind of seen the same kind of pattern of events happen from from your experience, but that's kind of what I've seen. You know. Yeah, well, that's the common thing, right? Knock off beers, like have a have a sedative to kind of just blind out your mind, so you can't really talk to yourself about how much you're not enjoying what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't say that for every tradie out there. Hundred percent, there's some people out there that absolutely love their trade, and that's for them. But it wasn't for me. So yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So when you started, obviously lifting weights. I mean, how long was it before you thought to yourself, okay, look? I'm I'm doing this. I'm loving it. I'm loving the fact that I'm lifting weights. It's like I'm looking good. I'm feeling good. When did you start to think to yourself, okay, I'm going to go and compete in this. I'm going to start to build this amateur physique or, and go and compete at national levels and and go and win competitions like you did at the amateurs. What 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 was the point when you thought, yeah, th- this bodybuilding thing's me. This is what I want to do. 
Well, to be honest, I didn't at all. Um, so this is where the story of that guy that was jacked and shredded and tanned, yeah. he actually talked me into it. He's like, man, you're pretty young and, and you've got quite a good physique there. Have you ever thought about competing? And I said, what, get on stage in a pair of shiny jocks with some fake tan? He- no, thanks. Like, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. no. Because, 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 like, you, you, I've known you for a long time and, like, I could never imagine, I've obviously seen you on stage, but like I could never, I'd never ever, if if, you'd, if I hadn't seen the pictures of you on stage and hadn't seen you prep for a competition like I've seen you, yeah. I'd have never said to myself, hey, Ty's the guy that's going to get on. Because you get on you get on that little G-banger. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, man. And I, I, I had the out there ones. I had the rainbow colored Diamante ones. If, I'm, if yeah, you're going to yeah, do yeah. it, I'm yeah, going yeah. to make them flashy. Yeah, so. mate, mate. Honestly, like, I, I could not wear them. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> you should try a pair on. See, see how, see how I you always, like I always, uh, the the photo I remember of you is is you stood there tanned as well. I think you're wearing a, r- a red one, a red one. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's been a few. Yeah, I'll tell you because it, it yeah, went on for yeah. a few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah mate. Honestly, so 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 he got you into it. Did he start training you, or what was what was the go with it? Well, I, I was just intrigued. I was like, and then yeah, he ended up talking me into it, and he's quite a, a persuasive man, Shane. Um, and yeah, he's just like do it, and he's pretty authoritative in the way that he speaks. So yeah, I was yeah, like. Yeah all right, I'll go under his wing. I want to look at that sort of way. So why not listen to the man? And I went through that process. My first um, competition, I'll be completely honest and a bit vulnerable here. Um, I didn't do it all out and I lost last. Like there's four people on stage and I didn't place. So last. (laughs) Yeah. But like at the end of the day, what, what, what were you expecting? Well, I, I had no idea, and and the interesting thing is, Shane didn't even know how, how young I was at that time. So I was twenty one. Yeah. Um, and I could have gone in the junior category, but he put me into the opens classic physique category, which is like against all men aged yeah. between like whatever age, whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah. If they've been, and I was up against guys that were competing for I don't know a decade or so already, and they all beat the pants off me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Not that uh, I had pants on. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, mate, you, you was wearing a G-bagger. You didn't have much material. <laughs> but, like, at the end of the day, right? So tell me what it was like, because you, you're on the lead-up. You're in the change room. You're about to walk out on stage. Yeah? yeah. Picture the scene, right? You're about to walk out on stage. You've got this red G-banger on. Like, you're, ta- you're tanned. Like, what is going through your mind as you're walking out? Because you're dehydrated right now. Because you, you've been drinking, you probably, do you, drink, do you drink a red wine before the show? Some people do. Port. Port. Port, my first show, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you had port. So you, so you were actually pretty pissed then, like, before you got Oh, on. yeah, one swig of that, and yeah, you're off your lips at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, so you walk out, because I've seen a few of my mates compete at, at various different levels, UK here, and a lot, of, mate, was, it's amazing how hot it is on stage, isn't it? Oh, uh, unbelievable. Those lights are a joke, like... You'll see the tan dripping on some guys, especially when I was first competing then. Yeah. The tans weren't as good and yeah, different styles of prepping depending on the person on how much carbs they've got in their body and how much water they're holding, et cetera, et cetera, as to how much they actually perspire on stage and it ruins the tan and then takes all that definition away. So it's did, pretty interesting. Did you have to do the dance routine? <laughs> Not quite dancing, but yeah, p- posing, yeah. yeah, posing routine. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, yeah. yeah, but you know how when you, I, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're watching me try and do that, do, yeah. do the little tricep flex. <laughs> I can't do it, but you know that little, almost got it. Yeah. You know that, <laughs> you know, I'm, fu- I'm so, I'd be so useless at this. I've got no coordination when it comes to that kind of stuff. I don't even know how to how to think about the muscle right now. Do yeah. you know what I mean? But like, yeah. So you, how did you, how long, so when your first show? This is what this is what I'm trying to articulate right now. When you go on that stage, you, you you're a little bit like you know tipsy. You're dehydrated because you've been because you've not been because I know you do a water. I know I remember you telling me once you do this water log protocol where you drink loads of water and then you taper it off and then you because you're tapering off the water at the back end of a show, you're you're still. Um, excreting well, that's a great word excreting water yeah. right I was going to say pissing it out <laughs> get a bit still, more you, technical you, yeah you, you're still you're still like pissing out water for, 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 for longer than than needed so it really dehydrates your body right yeah yeah so you're on so you go out you're up against these other guys is it not is it not nerve wracking to to, to be 
because you call it not dancing, but that flexing thing, man, to me, like to mu- it's to music, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You choose your song, yeah. So what was your first song? It was actually, uh, <laughs> Here we I, go. Can't, I can't remember the exact name of it, but you know the guy Ziz, right? It was it was one of one of his uh, soundtrack sort of songs, right. and that was that was my first one. Can you um, sing a bit for us? I don't know the actual. It was more just like I guess the feeling that it gave, like Jack shredded tan kind of thing, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. that sort of vibe. And he was like, I guess the idol at that point in time. And yes, yeah, so I used do, it a bit do you of know his what? song. If, yeah. if, if I ever if I ever did bodybuilding, I'd probably walk out to Daryl Braithwaite. <laughs> yeah. Riding on your horses or whatever that, whatever that, whatever that song's called, crazy. Or I don't know what it's called, but I'd, imagine I'd, you trotting on the stage. Yeah, I was just <laughs> trotting on. <laughs> yeah, but mate, so you, you've done you, you, now. Now you're going through this competition. You've you've placed last. You get off the stage. At that point, did you think to yourself, okay, <laughs> this bodybuilding thing's not for me? You know what I mean? Well, to be honest, I, I'd never lost before. That, right, yeah, yeah. That was the first time, and yeah, well, I guess... I, are you talking about in life? You'd never lost any sport? Yeah, never lost any sport. I was always the person that was either one of the top three or, like, winning or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, so that was the first time that I truly lost. Um, how, did, how, did, how did... Tell us how that felt, kind of. Because I, I've... When I... <laughs> I know this sounds a, bit, it sounds a bit bad, but, like, the first time I ever got binned by a woman was the first time that I'd ever felt like I'd truly lost do you know what I mean yeah, yeah, that yeah. One, it cut me man it yeah. cut me like so so you saying that bodybuilding was the first time that you felt like that yeah it's quite quite um because I I know how I felt you feel empty don't you 100% is, is that kind of how you felt yeah 100% just felt absolutely terrible and like my whole life was a failure almost like that kind of feel mm. and I'll be honest like went straight backstage and I was pretty strict with my food intake but obviously could have done it better because I would have placed better um but yeah I went backstage smashed a heap of jelly beans I had a kilo of jelly beans smashed a heap of them then grabbed the port bottle because I was like <laughs> like annoyed and I was like just spend like 12 weeks like preparing for this and then took a big scully out of that and damn I was to just to add another layer to that feeling of defeat, I was crook, man. I yeah. spewed. I was. I was not good. You're not, what, you this is this is before the competition. No, this was after. Like yeah, so, yeah, once, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. you you got you got sick because you just downed after what the port. <laughs> yeah, worst yeah. thing to have after that. Well, I, I, yeah, port port is not is not. Um, it doesn't. I mean, I don't drink, but port doesn't even smell nice. Like. No. It's the worst. It's the worst stuff in the world to smell. It was a good bottle of port, but yeah, first and last time I've had port. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so from from obviously going, um, you've obviously once you once you've done that competition and obviously placed last, you've gone away, you've licked your wounds. How long was it before you came back into the sport and started to win these next competitions? Because I know you you obviously started to pick up wins and started to win junior titles and stuff mm. like that as, as an amateur yeah how long was it between obviously your first show and then starting to pick up wins now six months so uh, straight after it mm. um after i had my my downer moment and whatnot i actually woke up the next day just looking unreal the most vascular i've ever been shredded and whatnot because i'd just gone out and eaten a heap of food and i was like if i look like this yesterday then i would have been sweet you know so yeah kind of flip flip the script for me and I was like I can I can do this kind of thing and so I just called up Shane and I was like let's do the next season I, I want to actually have a go at this rather than you know just just, just, just kind of yeah. doing it just because like I was like I think I can beat these guys I truly feel like I can win a couple of shows I, I, I'll do it this time and know? what was you weighing in at this time um, at that point in time I think that first show I was around 84 kilos so a kilo heavier than what I am now on my stage weight back then when I was twenty. Wow, wow! Yeah. Yeah, but I, I know I know you're twenty kilos down right now as we sit here from from well, when you competed. Twenty three from the heaviest I was when I was bodybuilding. Yeah, 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 yeah. So once you'd started winning and obviously got on the road with this bodybuilding, did you did you think at that time that you'd found your purpose and this was really what you were meant to be doing? Is that is that honestly what you thought? At that point in time, I was like, yeah, like I can definitely see myself, you know, diving into something like this. And I think it was more the mindset that 
I was still in the FIFO job. I hadn't even thought about entrepreneurship or anything like that yet. So it was like, you know, this is a bit of a purpose for me that I, I've actually got something to do while I'm at work because if I didn't have bodybuilding while I was at work, God knows, I would have been in a, in a whole different place. Maybe I would have been a drunk, you know? Yeah, because just explain it for people that don't know because obviously – when you're out in these FIFO places, you're out in you're literally out in the middle of nowhere, mm. and all and, and and you're surrounded. I'd say mainly by men, probably yep. um, lots of lots of and and probably I'd say as well that judging from what people have told me and yourself, I'd say that eighty percent of the people you're surrounded by are unhappy, a hundred percent, deeply unhappy. Yeah. Now, I I have been in environments when I was a trader where I was surrounded by. Um, my, my environment was deeply unhappy because of the people I was surrounded with, and the, and you cannot help but fall into that at some points in you, in your in your life. If you if you surround yourself with shit, you're going to come out shit yourself. Is what I'm is what I'm trying to articulate here. Yeah, is well, en- energy is contagious, right? Yeah, you yeah. know when you walk into a room, if someone's um, unhappy or if it's a good vibe or whatever in that room, yeah. you instantly if you if you're feeling down and you go into a room and there's a bunch of people that are having a good time it it lifts you up regardless it's contagious so same thing with that fifo lifestyle you're around that all the time and a lot of the boys were just complaining about their wages or doing overtime or working late or whatever and not getting enough um so i just chose to instead of going to the wet mess and continue complaining after work and drink beers i would go to the gym and be like oh so it just feels the, good. The, the gym gave you that gave you that focus, and yeah. that's and that's kind of why you went on. Because I mean, you went on then when, once you'd started to win these titles, you went on and competed at the Arnolds. Yeah, and th- I think that was when you got to your heaviest, wasn't it? I got into my heaviest post contest most of the time, um, but yeah, yeah, that was when my he- heaviest stage weight. What were you competing at then? Well, I was actually in the heavyweights category um, for the Queensland titles prior to Arnold's. Yeah. Um, but where I wanted to be was classic physique. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't on the circuit at, at that time. It was classic bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, so I had to get to a certain weight. And for me, it was 86 kilos. Yeah. So off season, I'm kind of sitting at around, you know, that 97 to 98 kilos, still lean, abs, you name it, like yeah. looking good. Yeah. And I still had to drop, you know, that 10, 12 kilos to make that category. That's, that's, that's mad, isn't it? Because I remember you when you was 97, 96, and you was ripped. You was ripped like mother. Like at the end of the yeah. day, <laughs> you was, yeah, obviously, I can't believe you drew, You had to drop 12 kilos just to, get on, just to get on the stage to stand a chance of actually, obviously, placing. Yeah. Well, it, it, it wasn't so much just standing a chance. It was like that was the category and the physique that I desired was the – classic bodybuilding physique it wasn't the mass monster are we talking frank zane here yep, yeah idol yeah, that was yeah. him i had him as my phone screensaver every yeah, day that's yeah. what i look at he was he was 86 kilos competing so that's that's me that's where i want to be yeah yeah I, 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 out of all the physiques that i've seen in bodybuilding man he composed too right he, he he was he i just i kind of i all those all those like colombo and 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 zane and and arnold the, the 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 physiques that those boys had at that particular time you just just beautiful like symmetry whereas now when you got the kai greens and the and the phil heaths it's just like a big ball of of like what just heaps it? yeah it's just, <laughs> it's just like yeah it's just it's just too much there's no to me it's that's not what that's not i i mean i'm just i'm not a bodybuilding fan so to speak obviously boxing is what i love but like if i was a fan that's not that's not how I would look at that. Like that's not my ideal physique. You can yeah. you you can picture the Frank Zanes on the wall, the Arnold Schwarzeneggers, the Columbos. You can picture all those guys, guys being on your wall because they are the natural symmetry, symmetry triangle type shape. Yeah. But but yeah, I know some people love the Phil Heath type look, but like mm. to me, it's just like okay, yeah, all right. But that's not that yeah. doesn't doesn't. What, what else do you do? Yeah. yeah. What what else? What else? What? Yeah. It's just not the same. Yeah, what else? Kai Green, though, uh, give it to him. He's flexible as yeah, hell. He yeah, can yeah. move, which yeah, which I yeah. love. That he he to, to to I feel kind of sorry for him as a bodybuilder because I've felt so many times that he's like come second, mm. like, and it's been the wrong decision. Yeah, I and I think that 
is mainly do, due to politics within bodybuilding rather than the condition. Yeah. Right? There's is a that, lot I'm, of that I, in I, bodybuilding. Yeah. yeah. And this is what I want to, this is what I want to move on to. Like, do, don't, did you ever find that you were losing to people or, or, or people were placing above you because they had a, they had a, someone on the stage or someone in the crowd or someone in the judging system that had a kind of favor towards them? Um, Personally, I didn't find it a lot with myself because I knew a lot of the people in the bodybuilding industry. I made good connections with them. So I kind of knew everyone and I had a team of athletes as well that were also prepping underneath me. But I did see it um, quite a bit in certain categories. I'm not going to name names or anything like that. Yeah, I'm not um, asking you to. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just like I felt like a couple of my athletes got placed a lot lower than what they should have. And then, you know, there's there's certain people that are on stage that are beating them. You're like, just how? But yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's bodybuilding. It's it's, it's, like, it's subjective. It's not subject- yeah. yeah, it's subjective. Yeah. Well, you, you were competing mainly under IFBB, weren't you? Yeah. Which is which is the which is I mean there's WBFF in there, mm. but that's like a kind of like a glamorized kind of thing. But yeah. Like IFBB is the one in it. That, yeah. that is that is the golden standard of, of yeah. what you do, isn't it? Well, I feel like WBFF's kind of yeah, it's kind of made its its point in the industry now, and there's a certain crowd that go towards that, and then IFBB is kind of like the pinnacle. It's yeah, the pin. Yeah, yeah. That's that. That's it's 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 like the Premier League of of the industry. Yeah. I want to I want to segue into obviously like at this point you you were getting in in physically looking you was in the best shape of your life right mm-hmm. how to to get in the shape you were getting in get, can you can you kind of give people a bit of um, because I really want people to understand this because it will help them make the decision on whether they want to go down this path themselves yeah. and and I know that you're I know that you're going to be honest and candid about this the, the there's obviously a lot of drugs and a lot of gear in the sport. Hundred percent, right? yeah. yeah. And I and and I want to know like how much stuff do you have to be on, and what kind of stuff do you have to be pumping in yourself as a young man or a woman mm-hmm. to be able to to be at the level that you're at. Okay, cool. So uh, even talking to people in the bodybuilding industry now, um, I never did it the way that a lot of others that I know do it. So a lot of others out there that are competing and prepping and whatnot, they're on the juice year round, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Me personally, I would always cycle on and off. I'd do 12 weeks prior to contest date. Yeah. And that was it. So the first contest would be 12 weeks prior to that. So say I've got Queensland titles and then it would be, I'd go over to Perth, compete the next week or two weeks after that. And then it'd be down to Melbourne for the Arnold's or Nationals over in Sydney or something like that. So, but what kind of stack of drugs are we talking about cycling? And uh, so are we talking about? Yeah, are we talking just testosterone? Or we, so me personally, what yeah. I was using. Okay, so at the start of it, I, I was pretty meticulous in the way that I did it. So it would be testosterone anthate. That's yeah. what I'd be kind of where I'd start with. Yeah. Um, I'd probably depending on where I was at, if I wanted to put on more size or not, maybe I'd, I'd have an oral like a. Uh, D bowl that I'd start things off with. Yeah. Um, midway through, then I'd kind of change the compounds. Um, probably go over to a testosterone sipinate, which is a, a different type of testosterone, and then that would change again about four weeks out. Go to a testosterone propionate. So it's just different half lifes. They work on different receptors and how the body reacts to it differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the testosterone side of it. Um, then getting close to the show, about the four week out mark, I'd generally use something like a tren. Um, so the tren acetate, so the shorter life, half life of that, and then a mastrone as well. So just to make it simple, those two compounds will make you a bit leaner, harder, more vascular all at once. And then sometimes you chuck in an oral. Um, like a Anavar or a Stanazol as well, just to kind of just <laughs> put a bit of icing on top of the cake there, you know? So, this, and this, this is what I wanted people to understand from this podcast, right? To be anywhere near this, the level that you competed at, you, you, are on some, you are on a cocktail. 
And but but I'll put that put that out there. That was mild to a lot of the guys that yeah, I was. Compa- yeah. That's yeah. a mild cycle, right? This this is it, right? You, you've mentioned no fewer than twelve strands or twelve different types of drugs, including orals, right? Yeah. Injectables and orals. I think there's about twelve to fourteen in there. Yeah. Someone can count them, but I but I don't <laughs> have time. But I'm telling you, there's twelve to fourteen yeah. in there, right? That's 12 to 14 different compounds that are not naturally, not the only one that's naturally in your body, I think, is testosterone, but not in the strains that you're putting in. What are the side effects to taking that much gear? Because I, I really want people to understand then there must there must be a negative effect to to that. I mean, the, here's the ironic thing with your with your with what you were doing at the time. You guys look the most aesthetic, healthiest beings, right? You, 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 you're, you're, you've got the symmetry on point. You, you, you're ripped to, ripped to all shit. You, you, you're looking great, fantastic. You're tanned, muscly, all that, all that good stuff. But what, what is it like psychologically because you're on these drugs and physically? Like, what are the, what are the things that that, that happen on the back end of taking these drugs? So I need people to understand yep. what they're dealing with here. Okay, so psychologically. It is a head fuck, to be honest. Um, and especially if you don't have a coach or someone who's guiding you in the right way through that process, it is really hard to deal with. Um, not just because of the drugs, it's because of the prep as well, remember? Mm. So my biggest opinion with it is if you're a dickhead before you start getting on the gear, you're going to be more of a dickhead when you're on it. So it kind of enhances your emotions quite a bit as well. And you could imagine like depleting yourself prior to a contest, like you yeah. don't you don't have carbs in and these certain things, so your blood sugar regulation's changing, all these things are starting to occur in the body and then you've got the drugs in there that are trying to force something in your body to occur, which is anabolism and, and drop the fat at the same time, which is a pretty hard thing to do synergistically. So... It's quite tough on the body and psychologically it plays in your mind a lot like, oh, I'm not lean enough or I need to maybe do X, Y, Z. I always need to do more to beat this guy or girl or sleep less, train more, all that type of thing. And you've got these thoughts in your heads over and over again the whole way throughout the process. Don't you find though that uh, because I, I've, I've, when I've been around this industry um, myself as in from the outside looking in, I've found there is a lot of um, broken people in in the in the bodybuilding world. I mean, yeah. I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn there. You tell me if I am, but I think there's a lot of broken people. And um, from from what I've from what I've seen with with they they've they're building this big Adonis outside because mm. they've never fixed things that have happened in their life and their mindset prior to it. Yeah, is and is is that something that looking back that you think that you did? Or it, or did you do you think it was for a completely different reason? No, I, d- I definitely think that maybe like throughout my schooling life and whatnot, like I wasn't one of the popular kids or anything like that. And maybe uh, I guess yeah, definitely I wanted to be seen, and that was a way for me to be seen. Like people would would come up to me. Like I remember going out one night, like after competing and whatnot, I was jacked and whatnot, and then these guys were like, "Is that Ty Lucas?" And I was like, "Yeah." Really, that's where I'm at now, right? Because I started building a bit of a social media following and all that sort of stuff at that point in time. And that's what was starting to happen for me. I was starting to be seen and it kind of felt good, but it also like played into this ego role of like, all right, now I'm the shit. I'm the popular guy, you know? Is it, is it, is, did, do you notice that the, the developing that ego at that time because of what people were saying to you, did you find that put pressure on? your relationship with your then girlfriend did you find it put pressure on you on your um friendships with, with with friends that you're friends with previously before bodybuilding and also like your family or was there any strains there yeah absolutely it come up with my family quite a bit um when i was back in the sunshine coast on my breaks off i'd still stay at my parents place because it was one week out of five right yeah, yeah. Like, there's no point in having like a rental or whatever then or buying a place so um yeah, I was quite rude and, yeah, I guess because my parents and whatnot didn't completely understand, it wasn't like, oh, come and have a, a coffee or come and have breakfast with it. And I get, I get almost angry, like, no, I can't eat that if, if I want to look this way, you know. Like, I can't I can't just go out and have pancakes or 
Like yeah. I, I eat out for breakfast. Like I can't do that. No. And I get angry at that because like I was like, can you just just leave me be kind of thing? And and that, that all kind of played into that. Yeah, man. And and I and I fully understand it. I was having a little obviously like before I knew this podcast was coming up and I was so excited about doing this because I yeah. know what's coming. I, I know I kind of can see what's coming through this podcast and I, and I know it's going to resonate with so many people when we really get into this. But can I, But one thing I was thinking about last night when I was sat in my apartment, just thinking about this today and what we're going to talk about. I thought about the time that I first met you right yeah. in the gym and I, I, I fucking remember the day. Right. And I just remembered thinking to myself and i'm sure you were thinking probably thinking of the same about me at the time and i want to just check this out right because yeah. this is my thought process right when i met you and this is all predicated on the fact that i had a massive fucking ego when you met me as well yeah. right yeah. i thought i just think we had a big fucking dick swinging competition <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because you were the bodybuilder i i was hitting the bag and, and do, doing the boxing stuff and like you would do it and it's just like i just i just remember that time and i just i, I just walked away and i thought to myself and it's only when I, I obviously like we both reached under the under the hood so to speak in terms of like the, the getting to know each other and obviously realized that there's a lot of common ground there and obviously <laughs> over the years we've become really good friends but i just when i remember that first time we met each other and that first interaction i was and on the first few interactions i was like fuck me we were both a pair of dickheads thinking about that now 100 yeah, percent. Yeah. yeah i can't i can't say that i remember the exact day and that was probably yeah, because i was yeah. so caught up in my head like I'm not even going to worry about that wanker yeah, at that yeah, point yeah, in time, you know, yeah, like because yeah, yeah. I just remember you being loud and like always trying to be in people's faces and kind of just be like, <laughs> kind of give me attention. I was like, who is this fucking guy? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, just bouncing around, just, yeah. just just being a general fucking nuisance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. No, I think I think that's all to do with um, and 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 like I talked about previously in a lot of these podcasts. I think and and it's only been since I've been on this journey, Ty. Right these last few years of, of you've seen me change dramatically and, and I think a lot of people have have but I was always um in this pursuit of 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 finding like my purpose or or people I was like I suppose I suppose the only way I can describe it is I was like why can't everyone love me do you know what I mean like because I didn't feel that love for yeah. my mum when I was a kid I've talked about it in the podcast I'm mm. sweet with it I've boxed it off I've been home I spoke to her about it it's all good right yeah. but I've had to go through that learning journey and that was because that was lacking in my life right then and I didn't I couldn't I couldn't communicate with um wi women how I'd like to communicate with them like in terms of like I couldn't have the relationships beyond you know beyond like casual encounters shall we say yeah I remember uh, that, yeah, 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 yeah 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 all right mate go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah all right but um yes yeah, so I couldn't do anything I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't have female friends back then like not in yeah, Australia yeah. I, I couldn't I couldn't operate in that in that spectrum or I couldn't there's a lot of things I couldn't do because of this ego and and it was all predicated on on that and that's why I was saying to you like when we both met each other it was just one big <laughs> it's just one big fugazi of 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 two two guys who are who are completely built on ego completely um, wrapped up within themselves and and not happy yeah not fucking happy neither of us were fucking happy when i look back and this is like four four and a half years ago mate yeah so neither of us were fucking happy at that point and you were achieving we, we were both achieving good shit mm. me I, me from the boxing training side of things you from the bodybuilding side of things we're both doing good shit yeah, we're both doing, so, so for everyone else looking to looking in on us and I remember this as well. I remember people saying, "Oh, mate, you've done. You're doing so well. You're doing so well." I was going home thinking, "Fuck me, I've done nothing." Yeah, I feel yeah. soulless. I feel empty. I've done nothing. And and I and I used to look at you, and I used to think, "Is that the same for you?" Yeah, hundred percent. Was that how you felt? Yeah, for sure. Because that was, I knew it wasn't a hundred percent my purpose. And do you want to go into like my transition yeah. there? Like what what kind of tipped it? Or? Yeah, in in a minute. But I wanted to. But I I, I, I wanna I wanna find out like. At that point in time, before we segue into that, I want to find out. Tell me how you felt, because that I just want to know how you personally felt at that point. Okay, so yeah, I got to that point. Like I'd won a few shows and whatnot, and I was like, "Yeah, like this is how everyone sees me. Like this is my image. This is this is who I am now." But I I felt deep down like th this isn't it. Like surely yeah. this isn't it. Like now I'm living on the Gold Coast. I'm not. 
away FIFO. It's not the only thing that I can do. But at what point did you start feeling feeling this um, kind of like this bodybuilding thing wasn't for you? Was it was it when you came when you was it when you competed in the Arnold's or was it way before that? When it really hit home was the last show I did at Arnold's. A hundred percent. I was feeling it, but I didn't like truly feel it down to a cellular level until that Arnold's competition. Um, but prior to that, there was still there was a bit of in my mind there, like you know, like I've got to there's got to be something else. But then in my head, I was like, oh, I've already created this, you know, like I've got to keep going, got to keep pushing because that's I guess the general mentality if you've created something keep going with it yeah and 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 it's it's what they call the sunk cost fallacy yeah you because you because you've put so much time into something and and i want and the reason i'm bringing this up right now is because i want to resonate with a lot of you and i hope this meets your ears at the right time that you're meant to hear in your life but a lot of people because they've put time into something like say for argument's sake with with Ty's bodybuilding he'd put so much time and effort into this bodybuilding to build this body because he's at that level where he's coming like first or second in most of the shows he's competing in and winning he he thought well he had to you have to continue right that's what you're thinking in your head because because you've got the body you've got everything so why not continue it yeah but just because you're you're at the level where it's it's now become what other people see is easy for you because you've spent years and years grafting away yeah, to get yeah. to that level. <laughs> yeah. So people now think it's easy, which it's not because yeah. you put five years to get there, right? Yeah. Now it's like you you think, okay, cool, I've got I've got to continue continue down this path, but you don't. You can literally say to yourself, "Fuck that, it's not me, man," and just quit. And that's yeah. just it. But, but 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 humans trap themselves in the fact that because they've put so much time and effort into it that they have to keep going. Yeah, and it's such a load of bullshit. And I've been guilty of this, especially with the um, with the pro boxing trainer thing. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just, just. Add, oh, I have to keep going because that's just that's your that, identity. That, that's that's, 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 that's my at. identity. That's in my Instagram bio. Do you know what yeah, I mean? That's yeah. that's what I do, right? Well, you've put you've 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 put so many years into this. Yeah, but. and you don't want to confuse people. It's like, oh, I'm a, I'm like content removal or now i'm a podcaster you know it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, are, yeah. are you confusing people with that or, yeah. or what is it like i just think I, and and that's that's my point i just think you've got to be you've got to be true to yourself yeah, like, yeah at the end of the day and this is what this is what this journey is about you know with me and this podcast and you and what you've pivoted into but just and and, and this is this this is the point right so and i'll tell you tell you how how i how i felt like with when i when i got out the when I was in that, when I when I worked a world title level in boxing, right? Yep. I, was, I was saying this to you the other day, um, and then we'll go into. You. I think you've got mm-hmm. a great point. When we walk into the ring, Michael Buffer's announcing everyone. We walk into the ring. It's you know what I mean. Weighing in in the red corner, three hundred and thirty-five. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. it's like, it's, and I looked out to eleven thousand people. Ty, I looked out to eleven thousand people stood in the ring. He's announcing it. The national anthems are going. Blah 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 blah. WBO world title fight. Jeff Horn just beaten before that fight, Manny Pacquiao. I was yeah. I was ringside. It's fucking great. This is my dream. Right? This is my dream. Working in a professional boxing corner at world title level. Yeah. I looked out into the crowd and I just like, man, this is this is not this is this does not feel anything like I'd built it up to be. Mm. I'd built this up to be the epitome of my life and when i got there i was an empty fucking vessel yeah and i'm serious man it fucking it literally broke my heart mate it broke my fucking heart i'm serious like it broke my fucking heart and uh i think that similar fucking story where your ladder's been where you figure out where you where you're standing there and you figure out your ladder the ladder that you've built and put against the wall and climbed and then you figure out you're against the wrong fucking wall 100% yeah I just felt that I felt like I was in your shoes then you explained that so well man um I guess thinking about that now I, I guess I had to transition up to that like thinking about it on a deeper level now the the whole last couple of seasons that I competed was purely for marketing purposes that was my marketing strategy look good people will come to you like you know 
Yeah. And I was coaching myself. So I was like, I was coaching myself and coaching anywhere between f- like 10 to 20 athletes per season. Like, how can he do this? Like, I'm definitely going to go to him for coaching if I want to dive into that bodybuilding scene. So I guess I knew for probably a good 12 months before that show, like, yep, this is not for me. Because you're always, back in the day, you're always uptight and snappy. Yeah. Because, and that's how I knew that at that similar time, we were both deeply unhappy with what we're doing. Yeah, because if you're not in your purpose, like, you get salty, you get you get sour. You just, you know, like, I don't, I don't want to deal with any comments that aren't going to help me whatsoever. If it was anything little, I'd snap. Or if someone didn't understand what I was saying, I'd snap, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. Yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Because I remember when I when I trained with you, and and I wasn't a weightlifter, and that never didn't understand the exercise. You used to be like, "Why? Why don't you understand the exercise?" I'm like, "Fuck me, brother! I, I just don't know what you talked about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to activate the anterior deltoid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even fucking know what it is." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you were shouting at me. I'm like, "Bro, don't shout at me! I'll chin you." Like, <laughs> <laughs> and you would have, you would have too. <laughs> no, no, no. But it's it's good. It was just like two egos just fucking having a sword fight in the yeah. gym like, it's just totally, it's totally, like i just look back on the whole the whole journey and i'm like fuck me it's just great but this is when this is when you took a complete 180 yeah right? that i never saw i've never i see you now and i get it but you you went okay i hate this my lad has been lent against the wrong wall for such a long period of time I'm kind of living this life that isn't truly me. Yep. And you pivoted and said, I'm going to become a naturopath. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like one extreme to the, not- to the other, right? I know. And then you said to me, I've got to study five years or, or something to, to or, or however many years it was. Final subject now. Yeah, you're on the final subject now. But I remember the day you told me you were going to do it. Yeah. I remember that day, mm. mate. I remember that day. And it's like... But you but I'd never ever seen you look more lit up in life than when you said that you were going back to uni to study naturopathy. Yeah, I'd never seen you. I'd never seen. I saw that. You know that. You know those. The, the, before I'd always looked at you and always like glazed over, like in terms of like you're looking through something or there was just nothing beyond the eyes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But when us when you said that to me in the gym. I, I, again, I, I because I never drink or smoke or do drugs, and I, mean, I always remember everything. And and I remember the day you told me, and you you was just so, it was such so in line with your purpose. I just felt it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You you go along this path now. You're in you're in you're doing naturopathy. T- tell you're obviously a hundred kilos at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like the most. You didn't look like a naturopath, mate. <laughs> no, <laughs> jacked and shredded, yeah. <laughs> you were jacked, shredded, and on steroids. But, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember you coming in the gym, because we were still training at this point. You came in the gym, and um, you're telling me about all these these health things that you were doing with your time. And I was thinking, fuck me, bro, but you're still, you're still taking steroids. Like, I wasn't when I decided. That was it. I, is, is, that, is that the moment you stopped taking steroids? The moment I stopped taking steroids was Arnold Classic. The day of, yeah, that was it. Yeah, done. and what was it? Two thousand sixteen. Yeah, but do, do, do you? And what was it that that made you like obviously go into naturopathy? Like, what what was it? What was the what was the mindset between that? So the mindset with that. So I'm sure that a lot of people know a guy called Matt Leggy, ATP Science, right? Um, so he like. I got along with him quite well in the early days bodybuilding and when I first moved to the Gold Coast and I surrounded myself with the people that I thought that were going to get me to that next level. So that was down at the mass training facility, which was a a big competitor with ASN at that point in time. Like they were kind of neck and neck there, but obviously that's a whole other story down that path. But um, Matt would come into the uh, mass facility and give us different products to try out um, because we were competing at high levels and we're always looking after ourselves. So best guinea pigs ever, the guys that can actually tell you what's occurring in the gym when they're using certain supplements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, So talking to Matt, it was like, oh, this is how this, this and this actually occurs in the body. And I was like, that, that's it. That's what fascinates me. Like, how does the actual supplement, what does it do in the body? Where, where does it go? Like, how does 
that actual just a carb powder how does that even get into the muscle yeah well that that's what i remember you see because when you were talking to me about um back in the day about like lifting the weight and all this stuff you just you just seem like ah, oh, you know and how to contract the muscle and all that stuff you kind of seemed like pff, disengaged with that as soon as you started telling me how um a, a carb is 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 absorbed into the bloodstream and then from the bloodstream <laughs> it goes into the trans quad, quad trans receptor and into the into the, i'm like mate you're blowing my mind here yeah, that was way off but yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what i mean though like it, it, it's so technically you went so technically deep and and, yeah. and like everything just changed like the weight started dropping off you yeah you went you your body now um you'll see this on youtube you probably what are you 80 kilos 82.9 i weighed myself yesterday 82.9 you couldn't when you were bodybuilding you could not stand up on a surfboard i could but yeah it was it was difficult it's it definitely yeah. different types of surfboards that but, i was but, using then but, yeah. but that was another thing you discovered i remember at the time you discovered your love for surfing and kind of wanted to wanted to pivot out of out of out of it you know into obviously bodybuilding because you couldn't fucking do what you wanted to do no i could so, not so no. you built this huge adonis body look great but you have no functionality for what no. you for, for what you wanted to actually do in life man you should have seen my traps when i would get out the back of the surf when i was like bodybuilding and then got back into surfing the things were up around my ears hey the pump was insane like a whole <laughs> nother like different training style right like going yeah, from yeah, yeah. the purely about building muscle to like cardiovascular fitness I was getting the biggest pump in the world from surfing. And I was like, holy damn. I couldn't even move my arms by the time I got out the back of the surf. Yeah, yeah. Cause Unbelievable. It's, it's really hard. I don't know if, if, if some of you are listening to this and you've never surfed before because you, you probably don't live in Australia. But like <laughs> when you got to punch through them first four, I think it's like the sets are like three or four waves. When yeah. you got to punch through to get out the back to get a little bit of a rest before you start trying to catch some. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's difficult to duck, to duck dive you board under the waves and punch through and then keep yeah. going against the tide because the sea's stronger than you think man that thing will wipe 100%. you out such a powerful thing man best way to explain it is kind of like imagine yourself you versus a rugby team trying to get <laughs> through a ruck but also hold your breath at the same time like every little bit so sprint get flogged and hold your breath at the same time come up and then do the same thing over and over again until you get out, out yeah, yeah, past yeah. the breaker yeah 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 it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's definitely, it's definitely, I, I thought it looked great on Bondi Rescue until <laughs> when I was watching it in England in my mom's lounge. But then when I got out here, like about here, 10 years later, I'm like, this is not for me. Yeah. Like, it, it just, you're just getting beaten up. I got washed yeah. up. I've been washed over the rocks. I've had, I've, I've had to have like, my back was just completely open. Remember you telling me about that at Snap Rocks there? Yeah. Well, can I, can I, <laughs> I, no, if, I I've got to tell you guys this story because it's hilarious, right? I get out, I get it. <laughs> No, it wasn't Snap at Corumbin. Elephant, Corumbin, yeah, ele- elephant right. Rock, right? Yeah. My mate was teaching me to surf at the time. He had been taking me out every day. This was the first day out on my own. He had been teaching me that the waves come in sets of threes and fours. He'd teach me how to count the waves in and go out the keyhole at, yeah. at this place called Elephant Rock, which is off the rocks. You go out this keyhole, and if you count the sets in right, it gives you a lovely little paddle out, and it's nice and easy, and then you're straight out the back, which means guys you do not have to paddle from the from the sand straight out through all the way all the sets of waves because yep. if you're paddling from there there's about eight or nine sets that you have to paddle through mm. right it's ridiculous yep. yeah? yeah you know where i am right now yep. okay kelly slater if you're listening you also know where i am right yep. but <laughs> this <laughs> this is it right so this day i just i get up there right and I, I, i'm just I'm, i look out into the surf and every time my mate had took me surfing it was just like geezers just like geezers surfing australian geezers surfing you like tanned lads just surfing which is which you know i'm not anti anti anything but like it's just not my type yeah (laughs) like this one day this one day i turn up there on my own it's like 14 women right and at that at that point (laughs) at that point in my life this is bearing in mind this is 2016 17 at that point in my life i was like this is this is unbelievable like, <laughs> this is unbelievable let me go talk to these yeah. women like let me get let me get out there and talk to these women yeah. like let me go and drop this english accent right yeah, yeah. mate honest to god right i i literally <laughs> i was so fucking happy that this day had occurred it was just a fucking absolute um whirlwind like a, a full setup of unicorns yeah <laughs> like all 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 15 out of 10s blessed like, from above blessed from above it's like the best day the, the, the waves are beautiful i thought this is great fantastic 
I start counting the waves in. Then I see this Brazilian chick fucking carving up this wave and I just fucking went, whoomp, straight out, right? <laughs> I got picked up. <laughs> I got picked up, mate. And I got thrown <laughs> over... <laughs> I got thrown over Elephant Rock. Now, now rocks, <laughs> rocks sound, to most people, sound dull. Dull and, and like you'd thud and hit the rocks and it, you'd get hurt and bruised. But these rocks, I can't explain to you, but they're like serrated razor blades yeah they got barnacles on them yeah. they got barnacles on them and they're slimy and you can't stand up on them so i was my leg rope was towing my leg out because <laughs> this board was seven six bro seven yeah. six board it's that's tow- hard to duck dive. It's, you can't duck <laughs> you can't duck dive it you have yeah. to grab you have to grab the top end and throw it under yeah because yeah. you're not meant to duck dive them you're meant to bloody count the waves in right you're, yeah. not, meant, you're not, not meant to be in this situation so anyway i'm getting smashed onto these rocks and I can feel blood coming out of me, man. <laughs> like I can feel blood coming out of me. My adrenaline is going. It took me a good, th- what felt like minutes, but I'm sure it was about 15, 30 seconds to get off the rocks. Yeah. I paddled kind of out and round whilst getting thrown back onto the rocks. And I was cut to bits, cut on my arm, cut on my legs, cut on this. This Australian <laughs> chick, 15 out of 10, mate, 15 out of 10 chick from Melbourne. She was up for yeah. the weekend surfing, saw me get, like, well, every chick there saw me get <laughs> smashed. How's yeah, that for the ego? <laughs> Mate, it, I, it proper damaged me. <laughs> it, it damages me even talking about it. Proper got smashed. Anyway, I'm paddle, I paddle out and I'm just like there on the board, just bleeding, <laughs> bleeding <laughs> out, floating on the board, bleeding out, getting hit by sets, mate, because I was fucked. I'd, mm. I'd literally used all my energy in my life not to drown on those rocks because it was really fucking hard. I'm not even going to lie to you. <laughs> so I'm... This girl paddles over to me, right? She paddles over to me. Are you all right? I'm like, do I look all right? <laughs> I'm fucked. I'm like, she's like, do you need a hand? I'm like, yes, I do. Like, yeah. I just, I just wanted my mum, mate. I just yeah. wanted my mum to pick me up and fucking take me home. Like, I'm like, mate, this is fucked, right? I was being out. She, she, she literally limped me to the fucking shoreline, <laughs> and I laid on the beach, and I could see that I'm literally cut so deep in my back. I've got scars on them now. Yeah. You still see scars. I, I was cut so deep and laying on the sand. I was like. It was a blood on the sand, right? She t- she literally, and my, my car was there. She literally like put my board in my car. We left my car there. She literally took me home, stopped on the way to get this Dettol, which 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 yeah. in England is a cleaning product, but here they put it on you, put it on cuts, right? Yeah. She literally took me on the de- Dettol, right, and literally th- th- took me into my apartment, like wiped down all my cuts and put Dettol on my back and left me there. How good? How good? And I was like, this is unbelievable, like. Like the the friendliness of that woman to to fucking pick me up and repair me, mate. But honestly, that uh, honestly that 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 hurt the ego. It hurt everything. My body was like, I've still got the scars on my back now, and that's why me, mate. I am yeah. never going to be a surfer like yeah. you. That's never going to happen. <laughs> I just had to tell that story on the podcast because it's such a blinded story, man. But like honestly, like mate, cut deep. But yeah, so you went into this this obviously naturopath naturopath thing, right? And you've you, you're now how many years into this are you? This is just under five years. So at the end of this year, it'll be, yeah, just under five years. And and the changes, the changes that you've obviously been through have, have been so, so dramatic, right? You've you've now gained a whole new clarity around your mindset, haven't you? Like, 100%. In, can you give people a bit of an insight into, into obviously like how you, you've gained that kind of clarity within your mindset and how you've kind of use that to to kind of be honest with yourself and leverage into all these things that you're doing and, we, and we'll go on to talk about the digital marketing and all the stuff yeah. you're doing ent- entrepreneurially but like I just want to kind of give people a bit of a backstory on how they can flip their mindset when they're stuck within something to get out of it and to go and pursue what you've gone and pursued yeah so I'll take you to the moment on stage at Arnold's there um, where this transition fully occurred like I felt it on a cellular level so I'm up there. I've just won the world qualifier the week prior to this and have been invited to go compete at the world championships in Spain, right? Then I've gone down to Arnold's in Melbourne and, yep, done everything spot on, looked great, was up on stage. And I was just like doing my front lat spread or whatever I was doing at the time, <laughs> you know, uh, and these flash jocks that I just, I wasn't even present. I wasn't there, like, if that makes sense. I was was thinking about other things, like, I hope the surf's good probably next week when I get back home or something like that, or what I'm going to eat after the show, right? And what really changed it for me is I had my clients there, right? 
And my clients, when they got on stage, I got that rush, I got that feeling, you know, that excitation or it's the same as anxiety really, but it's just yeah, the yeah, way yeah, that yeah, you yeah. look at it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I got that like butterfly feeling that, you know, that, that rush that you get. And I was like, I'm not a competitor, man. Like not in bodybuilding at least. I'm a coach. Like, that's where it really tr- changed for me. And I didn't feel good. So when I wasn't feeling good, I was like, why am I doing this? Like, I don't feel good. This isn't the identity that I want to have. Stop, man. Just stop. So from that day forward, I was like, nah. And I'd already just started. Yeah, just then I went straight and did my naturopath degree. Signed up the next week, done. And yeah, then that kind of has taken me on a whole nother path there. But the, the interesting thing was, right, because I had a lot of clients at that point in time, like for all the PTs out there, I was back to back all week. I had anywhere between 60 and 70 like PT sessions or consultations per week. And then I was doing everyone's programming one-on-one stuff like um, on top of that after hours and whatnot. So fully stressed out. Um, so I didn't feel good mentally, physically, but looked the part. That was yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's what I want to drive home for people. Like physical appearance doesn't always transition over to where you're at on a health profile. Yeah, hundred percent, mate. Hundred percent, and it's just, it's just me. I, and I, fe- I've like being honest and thinking about it now. Um, I had the same epiphany with the, like what, like I said to you, with the boxing coaching. Yeah, the same, the same thing. You know, even that surf story, which sounds funny. I got washed over the rocks. I got cut up. Yeah, all good, right? But even that, right? Even look at that. I that end me. That's yeah. just not what I do. But I was trying to do that because I thought to myself, hey, you're in Australia. You've got to surf. Yeah, that's the image, right? Because it's the image. That's that's right. So everything in my life around that particular time was all, everything I did was a predicated on how I personally looked or how I was meant to look or show up to the world Yeah. rather than my truth. So yep. I wasn't telling my truth. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. so so I so when you said that, I was like, I that's that's what I that's the first time I'd ever looked at that surfing incident as like that the reason that surfing incident happened, and I'm telling you straight now on this podcast, right? The reason that surfing incident happened and the reason I got wiped out wasn't because I miscounted the waves. The reason was because you're looking at the Brazilian chick. No, 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 no. no, 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 no forget all that. Oh, yeah, I was, but that, but the reason the reason subconsciously why that happened is because that's not me. Yeah, that's uh, not me. That's not that's not what I was. Me- that's not. I'm not meant to be fucking surfing. That's not. It's, it's so discontinued. You know me. You know me yeah. for years. Do you ever look at me and think, Frankie, you're a surfer? No, not in a million fucking years. Yeah. But I could. Go, but I could go and coach someone on how to how they can ha- change their mindset or how they can get out of a problem. I can go and do that, and that's just easy for me. But but yeah. this is what I'm saying to people is the fact that so many of us are doing things because it it seems like that's what what the society yeah. needs us to do yeah what we ought to do what like, we ought to do yeah, yeah exactly the, and and this, and you've just laid it out like in in no uncertain terms that that is the biggest amount of waste of time going yeah 100% is yeah not being in your purpose and how this kind of snowballed for me after that so i continued as a as a bodybuilding coach after that right yeah 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 so Driven by, driven by your love of coaching, though. Yeah, exactly. But the thing was, like, you can imagine this, right? Go from winning those shows, like three back-to-back shows, and then runner-up at Arnold's. Actually, I got, I got given third on stage at Arnold's, and then the scorecards came out after, and I was actually runner-up. So still on stage the whole moment. I got given a third place, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I was actually second on the scorecards. The guy called it out wrong, so <laughs> wow. there's a whole other thing. So it doesn't even matter, like whatever. Um, so the next season, I still had a bunch of clients competing and whatnot, right? And I was kind of feeling out of my purpose again, still there. And imagine like full focus on health gains instead of muscle gains. And my purpose was to lose weight so I could surf better and move better, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that, yeah. And then in that transition, I'm studying naturopathy, so herbals and biochemistry and actually figuring out how things work in the body. And I'm coaching these people and I'm like, this this is 
is not this is not really good. healthy at yeah, all. Yeah. Um, maybe I shouldn't really be doing this at all. And then when I got to that Queensland sh- uh, titles, or when I had all my clients in that show, I think that was about twelve at the time. Yeah. Then I had a bunch of people coming up to me like, "What happened to you, man? What ha- what happened to you, right? Because yeah. I'd lost like." what 10 kilos at the time like because yeah, yeah, that was yeah. my focus like i'm i'm driven I'll, i want to be a good surfer and, and these people that are asking you what's happened to you are all caught in this world of need bigger muscles need yeah. to look better need to need to aesthetically look pleasing yeah, to the like, eye are you sick ty like i got yeah, that from one yeah. person like, yeah. no i'm actually way healthier than what i was six yeah. months ago yeah, yeah yeah but they just couldn't fathom how i'd how i'd kind of flipped my life to doing this and i was like no you know like i'm doing a naturopath degree and i, I want to surf well like i'm not competing anymore and and all of a sudden in that moment because you because you now because you now don't don't look um like like a bodybuilder and you've changed your state you can't really biomechanically you can't really surround yourself with those people anymore no i struggle a bit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. because because you've you've completely moved polar polar opposites where where that was yeah but i I do think that there's quite a lot of bodybuilders or people trying to be bodybuilders or just guys going to the gym and juicing up just to have a certain image that are kind of stuck in that in that place yeah just change, man. Like I know it's difficult and it it is a rough road, but just cha- change the people that you're hanging around. Like you imagine this fir- first day at, at uni, right? Go into a, a, a college of natural health. Imagine this, right? Yeah. yeah. Going in that still jacked, way bigger than <laughs> any, still way bigger than any other natural health practitioner. So acupuncturist, naturopath, nutritionist, yeah. myoskeletal, right? Yeah. Um, going into biochemistry was my first class. 56 students in that class, right? Yeah. How many men? One. Mate. Mate. And I'm, <laughs> I'm jacked and whatnot. And then <laughs> like, just wearing like kind of, I think I was wearing like a semi, like pretty tight shirt. Like yeah, all, yeah. all my shirts are tight at that point in time, yeah, right? Yeah, right and, and then um, walking into that room and we've got like, we've got girls over here, you know, with their glass water bottle with rosemary in it for their, their brain function. And they've got like, you know the the typical kind of hippie look or dreadies or whatever. They're, they're the they're the girls that are in this class. They're beautiful people, but the look that I got, like, did they? Did, so you're saying that they judged you? Well, I felt it. Yeah, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah. Like, yeah. who who's this guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, who who's he? Like, what's what's he doing here? And thank goodness, my my teacher, Mister Jujali, amazing human, he, and. He, he was the only other male in the, in the classroom that first session. Chris, another guy, he ended up coming for being in the class after that. So we kind of sat together because, yeah, men. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, that's how it was. But I, I created a lot of really good relationships with the girls in that class from that point in time. And I think it was just that, I guess, overcoming that intimidating look that I had to actually... Yeah. speaking to me it changes just just like you and i yeah. once we pushed our egos to the side and we actually had a chat yeah, well, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I see frankie differently now yeah, I and mean, yeah. you've probably seen me differently yeah, yeah. when when that occurred right it's like oh he's not he's not just a jacked wanker bodybuilder with a mad yeah, ego yeah. about himself he's actually got a bit of knowledge there and he's a, he's a nice bloke or i hope you thought that about yeah, him. yeah. <laughs> no 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 i no, you you when we, when we actually spoke properly and had a conversation that didn't involve dick swinging yeah because right? because that's the, the that's the mentality we were both in when at that particular time four or five years ago when we actually first had a proper conversation that's when i realized the depth and i'm sure that you probably thought the same about me like and there is a lot more depth than we were showing the world but mm. so many people are not showing the world their true depth because they're not willing to be vulnerable yeah, hundred percent. To come, to, let me just break it down for you, right? To come on a podcast and talk about some of the shit that me and you just talk about in, so far in this podcast, yeah, it's fucking hard. Yeah, 100%. do you know what I mean? I've talked about my mum. I've talked about getting wiped out in front of fourteen chicks. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, I've talked about being binned. Like, yeah, I talk about anything on here, like because it, you got to show, you got to be willing as a man to show that vulnerability in life and and kind of 
you know, that apathy towards other people kind of, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, hundred percent. But so many people will not go into that. They won't, they won't, they won't go out on their shield, so to speak, and, and put it, put it on the line. And you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be open to that because that's how you find out what your true purpose and what your true being is. That's how you grow. I remember you saying pre-roll before we started rolling this podcast, you've done a lot of things like you've tried it. You've dabbled in lots of things. And you mentioned to me before the podcast that you are a coach, but you've coached surfing. You've coached, uh, you're, you're now coaching business owners and we'll go into that in a minute. Your coach, you've coached obviously health stuff. You've coached the dietary stuff. You're coaching the naturopathy, but you're, it all comes back to that coaching. You want, you just want to help people le- learn and, and teach people a way of doing something better than what they're doing it right now. Hundred percent. So I guess with that, um, that coaching there, I'm more of a, a guide. Like I'm really good at picking up the pieces of what you, the nuts and bolts, like the tiny little stuff that you can change. It's going to have a big effect on you long term. Like I don't want to just give you like that cookie cutter plan or that I'll get you lean in four weeks, whereas I used to do that, right? I used to prep yeah, people yeah. in 12 weeks, right? Yeah. And I will still prep bodybuilders, but I'll be completely honest with them at the start, you know? Like yeah. I'll say, lay it all out for me where you're at now. And they'll say, whatever. Yeah. They're, they've been on steroids year round. They've got X, Y, Z health issue. And it's like, all right, so so what's what strategies have you tried to use to – kind of get yourself into better shape now oh you know up up in the dose like so i started using a little bit extra right <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. like that's that's a cycle that you get into yeah. as in the bodybuilding world you get into that cycle of taking more gear more gear more gear it's like when does that end well it's all external stuff and a lot of bodybuilders that maybe are just doing it and not even competing their other route of happiness is doing drugs so it'd be like cocaine or possibly smoking weed or something like that they'll they'll use something else it's always something outside of themselves yeah that's actually needs to help them change but it's not it's it's a stuff inside you you need to deal with your own stuff and that's when i started to really get unpopular as a bodybuilding coach because i'd say you don't have an issue really you just need you you, but you're not going to be competing in 12 weeks you shouldn't be You need to fix the basics, the foundation of your health. So imagine this. Like imagine if you fixed your gut health. Imagine if you fixed your daily movement so then you're functioning better. Imagine if you fixed your nutrition, your hydration, not the sexy stuff, the basic stuff, the the fundamentals. If you fixed all of that, imagine how good your gear would work then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine how it would work when you had a bit of a break off that, got some health gains, Imagine your, your muscle gains from there. Like if I got on it again now, I would blow the hell up. Yeah, because because you you've you've gone and your gut you've gone and and got got all that stuff down pat before you started the gear. Yeah, and most people don't even get a blood test. No, they just start banging gear. Well, how do you if you don't know what you're insufficient in or where your or where your inefficiencies lie? How the fuck can you just go and pull something out your ass to go take that? Do you know what I mean? Uh, an- anadrol, anadrol is not going to fix your flexibility and your gut health. It's going to ruin your liver and you'll be toxic as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and obviously, since you've since you've been learning this and since you've been on this naturopath journey, haven't you found that there's so many drugs that you've probably taken that you wouldn't touch in a million fucking years now? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. There's a lot that I won't touch at all ever again. No way. Yeah, and. I'll, I'll be completely honest. After that Arnold's, right, so I, was, I still had it in my system. The week after that, I went and got blood tests. I got blood tests like every three months just yeah, to see yeah, where I was at. Yeah. Um, and I would had pretty low testosterone, even though that I was on it, right? Yeah. So w- I was like, what's actually happening here, right? Yeah. Um, I've shut off my natural production of testosterone because I'm putting synthetics in. Yeah. And then even though that I've got a decent amount of synthetics going in my receptors aren't even responding to it anymore because they've been thrashed really so think about that right i got to, i'll be like completely honest here sperm motility i'd be so lucky to get someone pregnant well even now no at that point in time like yeah, now yeah. 
I'm now you see. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. And I was and I was having those erectile dysfunction issues and yeah, those yeah. types of things. So there's so many symptoms that can occur. Like have a look at a lot of the bodybuilders out there. How many of them have got hair? I know you don't have any hair, but you're not a bodybuilder. But like, yeah, but have a think about all those guys that are losing their hair. That's that's a side effect. All the zits on your shoulders. Yeah. Like all those types of things. The gyno, you're actually starting to create tits. Okay. Really? Yeah. Mate, you're making me feel myself now just thinking about yeah. it. Ugh, mate, honestly, yeah. it's not. And what's that, that? What is it that starts, what, what compounds is it that people are taking that start to create this gyno? Is it just testosterone? Well, it's a bunch of different things, but it's an, it's an imbalance, right? Yeah. So it's, your body is always trying to get back to a place of homeostasis, of being at its median level, right? I love it when you start geeking out, mate. Go on, <laughs> go, on, go for nerd it. Nerd laugh, nerd laugh. Um, so pretty much right. So when you just, we'll just take testosterone, just the one compound. When you're increasing that testosterone to a high level, right? What does your body do? So say your, your testosterone levels are here and here. So with your testosterone and estrogen, yeah. when you increase that testosterone, your body will start creating more estrogen to get back to that ratio. Cause the body's all about ratios getting to a point where it's comfortable. Okay. So once you estrogen's up here you drop this synthetic out it's going to go below or even less from where you started if you just go cold turkey guess what it takes a while for that estrogen to balance back out so you're actually got more estrogen dominance at that point in time you speak to any bodybuilder i don't want to come off because i don't want those feelings like you'll start crying watching (laughs) titanic or something like that or someone took my napkin and you, you're crying, you know? Like, really? Yeah, it's really emotional. And, and that's where you lose all that because that testosterone, it's manly, right? You feel yeah, good. You yeah. get that pump. You've got that motivation. Yeah. Without that, I've lost, you'll hear him say it, I've lost all of my motivation to go to the gym to do anything. And what's their comfort then? Because they've depleted themselves or whatever, they start eating. So estrogen is high. You start eating shit food. What's going to happen? You're going to get softer and you're going to be a blubbery mess. You're going to be emotional and just going to get softer, start creating tits. You're going to get a fat <laughs> gut. Like how manly wow. is that? Like you're actually, you've created the biggest imbalance in your body. So how do, how do these guys then come off it and, and, and stop this imbalance then? Okay, so there, there's a number of different ways. I, this is, can I just say something before we go into that actually? There's so many women on gear and not many people realize it, mm. right? I'm, there are so many, correct me if I'm wrong, right? There's a lot of women on testosterone, isn't there, on Instagram? Is it testosterone? I don't, I don't know about testosterone. Um, from what I know, there's a lot of women out there that would take Stanozole or That's Anavar. Yeah, 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 yeah. If they're taking testosterone, oh shit. Yeah, I would not be going down that road if I was them. That, I know some of them ones that, that are really trying to pack on the, pack on the muscle and, and and they look like kind of without being nasty they look like men yeah they, or they, a they, be- bearded woman yeah yeah, yeah they, they kind of they kind of do take testosterone but stanozole and and this and the other I, the reason i say it is because there's, there's there's obviously quite a few women that listen to this podcast and they compare themselves to other women on instagram right mm-hmm. and i've i've spoken to a girl quite recently about this and she was she was worried about how she looked compared to this other chick and she sent me a picture of this other chick and i'm like this chick's on gear yeah, and she's like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "This chick is on gear, like you, I can I can see yeah, gear, can see I, I can see gear straight away, like it's just because I've been around the industry and I've been around yeah. people like yourself, and you've told me how to spot shit like that, and like yeah, I th- I looked at it and I thought that she was on Stanazol, or which is Winstrol, um, yeah. j- just by how lean she was. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Just not naturally for a woman to be that lean. Mm. It, it, it will, you can have the best diet in the world, but women have to carry weight in certain parts of their body for for obviously but you know creating for childbirth, for childbirth right? right yeah so when they start getting lower in these areas you know that they're on gear yeah 100 yeah. percent. so it's like before you so you can go back to your point now and obviously explain explain this stuff and and yeah well we can go right into it in any direction there so even with the women right yeah. so interesting part of my career as bodybuilding coach I went into a place where I helped out a few bikini competitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sort their shit out because 
what happens with women that get on the gear and what same same thing like massive imbalances occur everyone's an individual so it's it's different for everyone but what is really common with women in bodybuilding is endometriosis and PCOS so really yes and what is and all this prepping and whatnot if you don't do it in the right way as a female you're going to be really pre dispositioned to that um, so you're saying that but but by prepping and using all these concoction of drugs that they the endo and endo is is a byproduct of that after, it, after they finish yeah it's a, it's it's a it plays a role in it a hundred percent and um there's a lot of other factors that go into it so like the choices that they make every single day that's what really makes the difference but yeah i got quite popular in that field um because i fixed helped fix up a few women with getting their menstrual cycle back in place because a lot of the girls were losing their menstrual cycles uh, and then hormones are kind of going all over the place i won't go right into it and explain it too much but i helped out quite a few women with that and then i kind of had i was booked out for fixing up periods and i didn't even have a period at that <laughs> you know like, you don't have one now either <laughs> no. so i didn't need, like i was yeah. getting popular for it because i knew how to diagnose what the issues are and how we can fix that it's not an overnight fix like it takes a couple months right yeah yeah, yeah. um like anything that's going to be sustainable it, t- it takes a bit of time it's not going to happen overnight but it started to happen and that's when it really sparked on my interest as the natural health path is fixing people's health like that is a big needle mover yeah. like that that changes someone's life for long term for the rest of their life it's not just 12 weeks of bodybuilding prepping for a show it is it is long lasting change that stuff and it's not it's not just their life you're changing because if you change someone's mindset you're changing if it, and it, and that's a mother right that's a mother of two children then you are affecting the children's lives with her changed mindset which yeah. then affects their children and their friends and and so if you can remove these negative roadblocks and these negative cycles that people are going through at a mindset level yeah you could you, by changing one person's life and affecting one person's life you're actually affecting tens if not hundreds of people yeah. if not thousands of people down the track that's that's the power that's why we do this podcast well 100 well you'd be getting that now right you'll yeah. be affecting people that you don't even know and I'm sure that you'll get messages dropped into your inbox every now and then. It's yeah, like, a lot, Frankie, I, I, I took this out of your podcast. 100%. And, and you're like, I didn't even, re- I don't even know this person yet, but wow. 100%. There's a, there's a lot of people out there that will probably laugh at, at some of my vulnerability through these podcasts, right? There's a lot of people out there that will just say, fucking hell, Frankie, you're, like, yeah, you're, you're off your chops, mate. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, but. I have to be th- that way because it's 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 the truth and that truth I know for a fact has changed lives because I get those messages like you say that that, that are Frankie like that's just changed the way that I think about my relationship with my mum or my dad if I didn't talk about it if I didn't put my authentic self out there to be vulnerable and to, and to put it out there I couldn't do that mate yeah same with what you're doing do you know what I mean it's it's hard really fucking difficult to go from the egotistical world of bodybuilding where everything exterior looks fantastic but inside you're mentally fucking ruined go from that to geeking out on on how does the body work and if i do this does it do this and what's the byproduct of me doing that and that and that and if i fix this will it fix that yeah. do you know what i mean yeah. and that is a beautiful thing i want to talk to you about because you're in that because obviously this natural path stuff fascinates me yeah yeah i've seen this thing in australia and it's it's, it's ad- being advertised all over the world there's this there's this company in byron bay called life cycle yep Have you heard of them yep. yeah mushrooms talk to me about mushrooms which ones <laughs> there's i can't remember the exact names of but there's five in this set so yeah lion's mane reishi they're yeah, probably yeah. your two most popular ones yeah um i i, I dabble in them a bit um, but it's Apparently. not my forte, a hundred percent the mushrooms. But I do like them. I can't tell you exactly how they work because the research doesn't show exactly how they work. But you can you can feel the effects. But like any supplement, right? Yeah. If you're unhealthy, if yeah. you don't have good digestion, then the supplement's not going to work. So okay, let me ask you another question then. 
for the people listening. Yep. If what should of I think you're gonna probably I think I know the answer to this. You're probably gonna say mindset. But what is the first thing that people should fix before but like in within themselves and then and then and then obviously within their bodies to obviously get the best bang for buck right now. Yeah, well where I always bring it back to, yeah, hundred percent with that mindset there. Yeah. But building a strong foundation. Yeah. You can't peak perform or function optimally through life if you don't have the foundation in place same with business same with anything right but what do you so, what do you find out of all those things what do you find is what do you find are the two the three or four or five things that you see all the time that are missing yeah people don't deal with their shit if you if you don't deal with your own trauma and your own hand breaks to what is pulling you up to move the needle in your life then you, it's going to fall apart at some stage every single time. So if you can't have daily practices like meditation or breath work, whatever works for you, if you can't deal with 10 to 15 minutes of that, then how are you going to change like as a whole? So your mindset, the people that you're hanging around all the time, right? Yep. So yep. That, that just comes down to the energy, the environment that you're, that you're surrounding yourself with. Those two things... They're going to make you make better choices, right? Yeah. So then you go off, okay, what am I fueling my body with now? Okay. Yeah. So what's the right foods that are going to work with me and my lifestyle that are going to help me progress? Yeah. And then fourth, movement, right? So what are the daily practices or weekly practices or periodic practices? These are the three that I kind of get into with movement. And I've kind of changed completely with my training styles. So depending on the person, so someone like yourself... I'd be like, all right, Frankie, what is the minimum effective dose that we can do movement-wise that's going to that's gonna help you progress? Yep. Because what a lot of people do, and especially in the bodybuilding industry, you go into the gym and you flog yourself, you grind it out, you'll hear grind, 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 I'm pushing hard, right? Yep. All the time. It's counterproductive. Like if you actually look at how the body works, if you focus on recovery first before output, it's going to make a whole complete difference to you, right? So you're talking about sleep, nutrition, yeah. mindset, um, and and all these like exterior factors that before you even step into a gym or uh, any any environment, before you even step into work. I mean, if you've worked on your mindset before you before you go into work, you're going to have a better day, aren't you? Hundred percent, yeah. So mindset: what can you do movement wise? Who are the people are you hanging around with? And what nutrition is going to help me perform and get me closer to my goals? It's a strong it's, foundation. And it sounds and, and basic, sleep, right? Yeah. It sounds basic, but as honest as I sit here, so many people don't have that shit on pat. Like so many people, like I'll give you an example, right? When I started to get a little bit of traction with, the, with this podcast, people started to reach out to me, offering me this opportunity. Oh, you, you know, do, do you know what I mean? But I, I could, you know me, man, I'm, I can see through a lot of bullshit, right? Yeah. <clears throat> There's people thinking, oh, he might be having a little bit of success here, or he might be taking this to somewhere to a, to a new level. I want to jump on this little bandwagon. I want to start pulling him here, pulling him there. And, and I just simply will not surround myself with people just for the sake of trying to, I don't care how much of a following you got. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care how many blue ticks you got. I don't give a fuck. If I don't yeah. resonate with you, or you, or I know that you, you're not on my journey then you're not on the, you're not coming on the bus. I don't care yeah. what you what you think you bring to the table because I know where I am, I know who I am and I know where I'm going now. I've never ever in life ever known that up until about probably in the last year and a half. Yeah. Like the last year and a half I've gained this massive clarity and figured out my purpose on the planet. Sounds wild and woozy, but but that that figuring out that purpose, understanding what tr- that my triggers, my triggers articulate a previous um, miscongruence in my life that I have to go back to and fix my triggers. So what do I mean by that? Here's what exactly what I mean. I'll give you an example. Yep. Um, the, with certain things that, even how women, things that women used to say to me and this, that, and the other. Or, or let's just talk about rejection yep. or, or my perceived rejection from a woman that didn't want to go on a date with me or this, that, and the other. It would, it would going 
going back to that used to trigger me. I used to think fucking ego used to come out. Rah, 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 I'm Frankie. Rah, 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 rah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of thing. And, and a lot of men have this kind of attitude, right? But th that trigger identified went back to way back to issues with my mum, to, yeah. to, to stuff like that. And there's other triggers there that, 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 that I've, that I've mapped out when every time someone triggers me, whether it be out in the street, this, that, and the other, that, that trigger identifies something that happened to you way, way, way before that point. It's not even that person that's triggering you. They've said something to you that triggers you that you should write that shit down and how that situation came about. And you should reach into your past at that point in time and figure out when the fuck that came about yeah. and accept that issue and, and look at it from the, look at how you've built that truth around it. Right. Yeah, well. and that, do you know what I mean? It's a really powerful thing. I've done it with so many things. I've probably done it with about 30 or 40 different triggers now. Yep. Right. And I've still got some to go. I'm not, I'm not there yet, but I'm in a damn sight better place by doing it. And how does that feel for you? Mate, it makes me feel lighter inside. It makes me feel like I'm, I'm starting to really understand myself as a man. And like I said to you back then, I've, the last year and a half for me has felt phenomenal because I've started to I've started to make more good relationships and good friends with both men and women. I've started to, I repaired my relationship with my mum. Amazing. Felt, and, and and that was a beautiful thing for me to go back and be able to not I resented that woman and she's a beautiful, beautiful soul, my mum. Beautiful soul. Yeah. But I resented her for years because I thought that, you know, obviously like I've said many times, I thought she didn't love me and all this and the other. I thought she had a different relationship with me and my sister. That fucking little chestnut there and and, I, and I'll keep drilling it into you guys, is that little thing that it's just it's just all perspective of one event that happened in my life that affected me for the rest of my days, similar to with you and, and everything that you've done. It's, it's like you've got to go back and reach back and, and, and start fixing that shit up because it will leave you broken. And there's so many, I, and especially like, I see so many broken men and women walking around like lost dogs in, yeah. in, the, in society, trying to be everything to everybody. You can't. No you way. can't. You never can be. Someone left me a one star review on this podcast the, the other week, right? A one star rating. They didn't even leave it. They didn't even type a review. They just left me a one star rating. That would have massively fucking triggered me. Yeah. Massively fucking triggered me, right? I was, but I had already prepared for my first one star review because in order to go and achieve shit in life, you are going to, when you start getting haters, you are starting to really start to achieve some good shit. So this was a hater. So he's left a one star review. Wicked. No explanation. Just left a one star review. That would have that would have pissed me off for weeks. Ty would have pissed me off for weeks. Yep. I'd have gone into. I'd have fucking went to punch someone's head. But like I just because I'd already mentally prepared myself for this that was coming. There's going to be a one star comes, and when it comes, that's fine because that means you're doing the right thing, Frankie. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the mature attitude. When that started to come, when it came, it was like okay, cool, sweet. That's how it is. It is what it is. Everyone's allowed to talk to their opinion. You're not everything to everybody. And that's fine. But to some people, you are enough. Like to, to you are enough to yourself, but you are enough to you are really helping a lot of other people. So for yeah. every one person you're not helping, there is one person you are helping. Yeah. And that's fine. You can't help everybody. Exactly. And and how's that for, you know, like spilling the drink on you? Like a lot of like as you said in your previous time, that one star review would have held you back from creating more podcasts like i'm a failure like stacking your emotions on top of yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. and now it's just like it's okay like that's gonna it's, happen it's, it's, water off. it's just an, it's just a it's another it's another stone in the path that has to be kicked off and just moved on because but but do you know what i'd have done in the past that stone that i've just kicked off that path i've picked it up and i've carried it fucking with me yeah that's, that's powerful that's a powerful statement that's exactly what people are doing there's so many stones that people are carrying along this journey with them that they just need to pick up and throw the fuckers away. Yeah. And they can do that. Like I said, figure out everything that triggers you. Every fucking thing that triggers you in your life is predicated on a past experience and it has nothing to do with the experience that you've just, that you think's just triggered you. Absolutely zero zip in my personal opinion. Yep. always something far deeper far outreaching that's affecting you yeah go back 
accept it, look at it with new eyes. Because I, I looked at that, that thing with my mum. I was looking at that at six to eight years old and getting that perception. Yeah, wow. I, didn't, I didn't have a fucking clue how to look at things then. So, I, so, <laughs> so when I look back at it with, with yeah. 32 year old, 30 year old eyes, 31 year old eyes, 32 year old eyes, when I look back at it now, I'm like, well, that's fucking stupid. That, was, that wasn't even what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That didn't happen like that, Frankie. It's your perception at that time. It's, yeah. it's my perception. I was eight years fucking old. Of course yeah. it's my perception. I didn't know I what I was talking about. Right then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But so many people are picking those things up, having the perception and carrying it. That's a quite a powerful thing that has come up for me, actually. So those t- points in time where you feel like you're a bit of a failure, right? If something's gone wrong, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? You've, you've lost some business. And this is what used to happen to me when clients are like, you know, like, I'm, I'm finished up. Like, I don't, I don't want to, like, keep competing or, or work, work with, like, you anymore kind of thing. And I would take that on board big time. Like, Cause you're taking oh, it personally. Yeah, like, oh, I'm, I'm a terrible coach or whatever. Yeah. And I would stack my emotions on top of yeah, that, you right? Yeah, ju- you just take that and then another bad thing and you put it on top and you compound it. It makes it way worse, right? So, yeah, yeah. like, compound interest. It works both ways. So what I have figured out is that was just my opinion after that yeah. shit occurrence, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't fact, it was my opinion in my head on what was actually occurring. It was not the, like I would say straight away, I'm a terrible coach. That's why they don't want to work with me anymore. It's like, no, that's your opinion telling you that. You've got another 50 yeah. clients there that absolutely love and rave about you. And maybe it was just their time to have a bit of a break, man. Yeah, but s- s- look at it from a different angle as well, Ty. That woman that's, that's just quit being your client at that particular time may have gone home and figured out that, bodybuilding wasn't even for her exactly you've took it personally but it's all perception and there's always there's always your truth their truth and the truth in the middle yeah right the truth is always in the middle and it's all about the perception and you can always look at things from a different angle and what i try and do now rather than losing my shit i try to look at things from their perspective yeah to see how they see it how strong is that when you put yourself in someone else's shoes like that? Just try it on. Well, it's easier to do that once you know who you are as a person yep. and know where your morals lie, where your authenticity lies, what you truly want to be, how you truly want to turn up to the world. It's easier then to go and put yourself in the position to think about how, how the fuck do other people feel right now? Because mm. I, I need to understand that before I start shouting my mouth off. Yeah. Which, 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 you know, I'd, I'd have been the first one to jump down your neck if you'd pissed me off years yeah. ago. 100%. But, but, but that's all ego driven. Yeah. That's, that's, the, there's, there's, the, there's no learning in just keep reacting. But you know, those reactions, are, when I, when I, when I delve back, they're all triggers. Yeah. They're all triggers. And do you know where that trigger came from? I'll tell you, I'll tell you, right. So I, if people used to say to me, if people used to say to me, um, hey, f- um, like, okay, I'll give you an example. The I was at school one day, and I, I was I, I was always playing up to 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 gain attention, yeah. to gain attention, right, to gain acceptance, right. And this one day, I'd just gone into school and I was just chilling. I thought I can't be fucked to fuck around today. I'm just gonna just gonna turn up and just take it easy and not cause any problems. And then one day something went off, and they thought, well, because Frankie's caused all the problems previously at this school. We're just going to fucking blame that cunt. Blame it on him straight away. So they blame me, right? And my mum turns up at the school, right? And she, she goes, you've done it again. I went, no, 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 hold on a minute. Hold on. Hold on. I've not done anything. I've been, oh, mate, honestly, I was, I was like, I haven't done anything. She's like, you have, because I've called it. A, and, I, and I'm starting to defend myself, start to defend myself. So, so every time in life from that point on, that anyone accused me of anything that I hadn't done, I used to rear up like a motherfucker. Like yeah. I used to fight. Like I used to want to fight everybody about it. And it's and I was like, it's just going back to that situation again. Similar thing. Box it off. See it from both perspectives. You'd yeah. been a prick. You'd been a fucking prick for like seventeen different times before it. <laughs> so naturally, she thinks you've been a prick this time. Like naturally. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I understand that. I understand that now. Now I can box that off. And now I don't have to get triggered every time someone says, "Hey, Frankie, you've done it." I just have to understand that that's their perspective. Get into it and then fix it and then and then and then go from it. And what was the response with that one when you would blow up 
and defend yourself there, it just makes things even worse, right? Well, one, it makes you look like you're you're guilty of what they're saying, yeah. right? <laughs> so it's it, it's like uh, it's like do, do you know what I mean? Like it's, it just send you down it send, again, yeah. it's like well, this is not this yeah. this is not 100 percent guilty like, <laughs> yeah. judgment judgment that's <laughs> he's guilty yeah. yeah do you know what i mean like it's just mad it's like you know like when you're dating a dating a woman and then she says oh have you slept with this girl and you're like i am fucking slept with her. and you, she just now thinks you've slept with her and i'm like but you never did but like yeah. but you've just put yourself in the position where because you've because you've gone over you've gone over to judge judgment it's just like you got to understand that people are going to judge you anyway. You just kind of see it from yeah. see see it from both sides. But mate, I just mate honestly like this. That's we've we've we've, we've covered so much in that. <laughs> but this, what I wanted to go into now. Obviously, you've pivoted into the digital space, and obviously, you're, you're now helping business owners. Yeah, correct. Um, so you've gone full, full, full circle. Well, sort of. I think I'm going to integrate this together, and it's kind of come to a bit of a realization this week. So, it's not not a passion, or not a hundred percent of a passion for me, like the digital marketing space. But I'll just run you through why I've gone, I've delved into it. Yeah. And early on um, in my PT career, like I started gaining traction, popular coach, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then I've got to a point then where it's like all right now i need a website so i've reached out to a, a couple of guys piece of crap well didn't work didn't do its job spent a bunch of money ended up spending just under twenty thousand dollars on website and marketing campaigns etc cetera, etc cetera. zero return on investment so yeah. salty as I, I, I feel you i feel you i feel you i feel you i've i've sp- I, i've built software service products that haven't worked and all these all these things that tr- to try and create different flows and this that and the other and it's not always going to work no but but, but to, to obviously to have a winner you've got to have losers yeah there's exactly. not there's not an entrepreneur that's been on this podcast even ones that earn 60 that turn over 65 million dollars a year right yeah that haven't been through well that didn't work. that's that's not the right time for that we'll yeah. do that in two years time yeah do you know what I mean yeah so the, what happened for me then is like, you know, I had my ego in place there. So I was like, you know what? Everyone's useless at this. I'm going to do it myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I figured out how to build websites on WordPress. And then I started going into ClickFunnels and like all these different softwares and playing around with all of them. And then all the follow-up systems, all this stuff. And what kind of started happening the last couple of years is that other people had the exact same issues where they've bought a website or whatever and it, it didn't even do what it was supposed to do. A website, a lot of the time, if you're in the service-based industry, all you want that there is to show who you are a little, with a little bit more depth and to gather information from people so you can contact them and then possibly work with them if it's a right fit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. And... There's so many people out there that have just got a website that just sits there and and gathers digital dust. It doesn't actually do anything, but they've spent a couple grand on it, right? Yeah. yeah. Terrible investment. So what I've dived into now is creating websites that are effective for service-based industries. Yeah. And then also all of the follow-up systems. I've got a bunch of people that help me out with Facebook ads or Instagram ads, anything like that. I don't do all of it because it's not my passion. But I've got people in my pocket that I can reach out to and go, hey, my client needs X, Y, Z. You put it all together. You package it. You because you you you're, you're basically going in as like the the the, the coach and the, and the, and the consultant into a business, and you're saying, okay, the, like you're doing with your PT, like you're doing like you're doing with naturopathy and everything like that. You're basically saying to people, okay, tell me what's wrong. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I'm going to prescribe you the solution because you've told me what's wrong with your business. What's wrong with, and that's and so you've just followed that same, that same rabbit hole and the same thread throughout everything that you've done. Yeah. So I've found the pain points of other people. So my avatar is 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 me. People like you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly who who I was, where I was. I've sat in those shoes, right? Yeah. So I'll have a conversation with them. What's going on? What What do you need? And I go, all right, let's. Nail all the basics. Like people, I've had a bunch of people go, oh, can you help me run Facebook ads? Yeah, okay. Do you have a landing page? Do you have a Google My Business account set up? Do you have a Facebook 
etc yeah, yeah, etc yeah, yeah. they don't even have those little one percenters yeah, yeah, yeah. there yeah. so it's like let's build this strong foundation i'll help you do all that yeah, right? yeah, yeah. and then then you can start pouring the gasoline on top of it and then start and, creating yeah. some more income from your website or your service-based business when you've got that f- strong foundation so that's where i'm at with that and is that what's generating you most your rev- revenue now um yeah i would say it. yeah yeah it's yeah. probably gonna switch a little bit more over to the health blueprint side so that's yeah, my yeah. core foundation program that i take people through and it's, that's something you're doing within the naturopathy stuff yeah yeah so give people a bit of a background into into how you can help them with the naturopathy stuff if they want to get started with you so pretty much where it's at with so it was like pretty much what what's missing in the industry so you'd see it with a bunch of influencers you, you know a lot of them right yeah no, um yeah. So especially in the health space definitely. yeah they all sell a cookie cutter program right so yeah yeah some people are going to get results off that but i've got a really high success rate with creating the changes that people are, are, are wanting and I don't even need to market because people are referring. Like I'm not selling on price like everyone else. I'm selling on, I'll get you the result. I'm more than confident. So I've got this core foundational program that's there. So you're actually learning the tools and techniques that you need to make a change in your life. So yeah. you've got that whole learning aspect there. Yeah. Then you've also got weekly group coaching calls with me. So you jump on a Zoom with me and the other people that are going through a similar similar process. Not exactly. Yeah. But yeah. then we talk you through and coach you through that live. Yeah. And then another layer to that. Yeah. You get the one on one time with me as well. Yeah. So my old model was like time for money. So it was like back to back clients all day. So yeah, yeah. This is kind of and not on purpose as well. Yeah. Exactly right. So, so you basically destroy your soul. Mm, and, I, and I was unhealthy because I was so stressed out with what I was doing. So I've figured out the systems and best practices that not only get the best results for my clients, but, but help me out in my health and my endeavors to impact a lot more people in their, healthy, in, in their health and their lifestyle. So where can people go to if they want to look in and, and see, see, the, see the, obviously the website for that? So tylucas.com.au perfect that's just tylucas.com.au go and go and check that out if you want to get on any uh, any advice on naturopathy and stuff like that what about the digital marketing stuff so leadfunnels.com.au so yeah the pure um purpose of that is to create platforms that you can gather leads for your business yeah beautiful man. beautiful is there any i i always ask people this like because we've 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 covered off so many topics in this podcast. Yeah. It's, it's I'm sorry it's been a bit here, there, and everywhere. It's just because when me and Ty, this is the kind of conversation me and Ty have. It go it goes. It's like ping pong. We just <laughs> we just go all over the gaff and, and rabbit that, holes. Yeah, and that and that. Sorry, <laughs> I I don't know why I'm apologising. It's good content, but anyway, it what what kind of final thoughts do you want to put to the audience where you think you know if i could just leave them with one thing if i could just if i could just say one one thing or one or clarify a few points in, in a in a real big paragraph yeah what would i say right so nail the basics man that's it a strong foundation whether that's your business your health your lifestyle your relationships you need a strong foundation because at the end if you're trying to force a situation things are going to fall apart right yeah and that's where it all starts it's not the sexy stuff and i know we get marketed to there's a lot of marketers out there that will push the fast effects like you'll get money now or you'll get a result now it's not sustainable it's not not long term if you want a result and you want to keep it long term and make a true difference in your lifestyle business health whatever then build the strong foundation first and then you can start that peak performance and that's what i love i love building the foundation picking out the small bits that you're missing and then we just start working on the performance side so of you everything. can ramp you can ramp scale. It, you can ramp it up and scale yeah. it from there time man just uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast just no worries, uh, give, give me your instagram where they can follow you yeah so it's ty underscore lucas and we'll we'll put his instagram and and all that stuff in in the bio look guys i just want to say like thank you very much if you've got to this point and you've and you've listened to us and you've enjoyed this podcast I, i've i've thoroughly enjoyed doing it with your time i, I really have like, i really want to get this out there 
Um, if you can do me a solid favor and if you've got something out of it, just um, tag me and tie in it. Uh, share it on Instagram, share it on Facebook, share it on all the platforms. Go and leave a review if you feel like you've got some got some gems out of this and you've and you've obviously felt um, the sincerity in what we've both been trying to articulate on this podcast. And again, thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for your time, Ty. Yeah, thank you very much for having me, man. I love what you're doing. Mate, I, I, mate and to be honest, I love it too, mate. I just, I love this shit. I you can tell. It. Mate, I know you can tell, mate. I did tell. Anyway, guys, have a blessed day. It's at Frankie Lee on Instagram. That's at Frankie Lee. If you want to find anything else out, it's frankielee.com. Um, give us a like, follow, subscribe. We're also on YouTube. Um, just search the Frankie Lee podcast and all that stuff. And guys, thank you very much. Peace out.